Early on as a kid, whenever I would say my name, people would immediately say, are you related to C.L. Dellums? Is, is that your father? Yes. And so I realized that CL, that Dellums was magic because whenever I'd say my last name, they would always ask, is CL Dellums your father? And I'd say, no, it's my father's brother. That's my uncle. And so I realized that he, you know, had gravitas and that people respected him because he was a civil rights leader. He was a labor leader. He was well thought of in the community. He was a, a forceful person. I remember um, he once told me uh, that I should never run for political office. He did. <laughs> yeah. And you know, he's a labor, labor yes. leader and a civil rights leader. Yes. So he said, never be the guy out front. Be the power of influence behind the scenes. Well, later in life, fast forward in the latter stages of his life, ACLU honored him for a lifetime achievement in San Francisco, and I flew home to be, be there. Thousands of people packed in the big hotel in San Francisco. And, you know, he was a living legend. I mean, he, this guy's history. And, and in the course of his remarks, he said, one piece of advice that I'm happy that my nephew never took was I told him never to run for political office, and I'm happy that he didn't take that advice. And this is when you were in Congress. This was when I was in Congress. Yes. And he said, you know, I'm in the latter stages of my life, but not to worry, there will still be a Dellums fighting, <laughs> you know, and that I was still How here. True. And so, you know, he gave me that legacy. Um, there's one other, I remember once, um, I had asked my mother for some money to, to do something. I don't quite remember what it was. And my mother didn't give me the money, so I got on my bike and I rode down to, I called him Uncle Cot. And because uh, his name was Cotro Lawrence Dellum, that's where the CL comes from. And so I went down to his office to see him and, you know, put my hand out. And so I asked him for some money and I told him that my mom didn't give it to me. And so he said, sit down and. He said, I want to tell you a story. And he told me a story about uh, Walter Ruther. Um, I think it was Walter Ruther. The um, leader of the mine workers the, with the big fuzzy eyebrows. And he said at one point when he first, this guy first organized his union, he didn't have a strong union. And when he sat down across the table from management, he, he begged them. He said, all I'm asking for is just a few crumbs for my workers, just a slice of bread, just a little better wages, a little better working conditions. He said, but when he came back the next time to negotiate, he had the largest labor union in the history of America. And when he sat across the table from the management, he said, now this is what I want. One, two, three, and four, and if I don't get it, we're going to shut your mind down with a strike. He said, you know why I tell you this story? And I said, no, Uncle Kyle, why? He said, you negotiate, you, 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 you ask and beg from weakness, you demand from strength. He said, you didn't have a strong hand, so go home <laughs> and, <laughs> and negotiate because you, no, you have no power in this situation. You are not dealing from strength. I never forgot that story. I guess not. <laughs> you demand from strength. And um, so, you know, it was a lesson that I learned from him. But he was a wonderful man, beautiful man, um, very gentle man, but also very strong and very forceful person and uh, made a very great contribution to my life as a role model.